We ain't gonna be here talking for forty five no. minutes. <laughs> John, are you gonna record, yeah? Keep talking, yeah? Okay. One, two. Rhino season. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm gonna see if I can get some of those damn mics. Yeah, they look that tough, would be great. Right? Yeah. Is that alright? That would be really great. Is it recording, John? Yep. Okay. Oh, geez, I check. <laughs> check it, man. We told it. I have it on. <laughs> my nimble fingers. My nimble fingers. Inside. Inside. I hope you're in the dome there, Rhino. Oh, I'm here. You're in the dome, yeah. yeah I'm in there. <laughs> That's oh, it's cool, probably yeah. about the Working. probably about a yard. Yeah. Oh, we have a skateboard upstairs. All right. Hear me on the roof. Nice one. Don't kill yourself, boss. <laughs> Don't kill yourself. We need you tonight. <laughs> okay, man. Let's go. Time is four thirty-seven, twenty-eighth of uh, what was it, June? Yeah. We're talking with Ram L Z here. All right, Ram L, man. Let me ask you a few questions, they're just informal stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's been the most interesting thing that happened to you in the last 10 years, man? Or some of the most interesting things? The development of iconoclast panzerism, fully realized, uh, where I actually took the drawings of, how you say it, incomplete architecture. Right. Which uh, were letters, the chassis of the letter A, B through Z. Uh -huh. uh, turned into tanks for real. Tanks. Um, you uh, when you design a car, you design a chassis out of clay uh -huh. right, for a car. But what I did was I designed a chassis of a letter out of clay, but I put missiles on it, wheels on it, right. wings on it, right. and I even shipped it through a wind tunnel. Right. The wind why, do you, why do you put missiles and things on it? Because uh, in graffiti in 1990, was it 1990? Uh, there was a lecture given where in the 70s, we would put arrows on those letters. Right. We discussed uh, many presidents like Lee, Gandhi, mm -hmm. you know, people like that. We discussed the trains are a big book. Right. They are flying through a wind tunnel. Wind is, as pressure is going backwards against any train that's going forward. Right. So you design the wings or the dream of the wings, or the dream of the arrows, becoming more aerodynamic. Right. And when an arrow, a directional symbol, a symbol of direction, turns into a missile, you're no longer directing your emotions, and the style changes into a tank from wild style, or right. burner. If you know wild style, yeah, yeah. then there's burner style, which has two or three arrows on it. Yeah. Then there's gorilla style, which has three or four arrows on each letter. And then there's wizard style that has four or five, six more arrows, and then they start to lock down. And they start to turn on you. They're, they're not, no longer direction symbols, just simple triangle with a rectangle behind it. Uh -huh. They start to become more architecturally designed because they have to meet the requirements of the letter's chassis right. as the train goes through the tunnel. Right. Now you have a wind tunnel in front of a whole bunch of little kids who didn't know what a wind tunnel was. And then we, we, we started designing letters like it was a wind tunnel. So now you're shipping words as tanks or spaceships or dragsters yeah. through a wind tunnel. Right. And you have a page, each train car, we call it a page because the number at the top of the train car yeah. could be a page number, right. like any page in a book. Uh -huh. Or it can be a year number. Mm -hmm. Which means if it says 1875, you went back in time. Right. If it said 1347, we're further back in time. Right. If it says 2015, to the future. Uh -huh. So I came up with a statement called Gothic Futurism. Right. Right. Gothic before Gutenberg's printed press. Uh -huh. Right. The ornamented manuscripts, illuminated manuscripts, and then Futurism after, you know, Gutenberg's printed press. Where you have ornamentation with people, places, and things from the monks, and then you have the monks of the subways, and then you have the architects of how to build chassis designs, which were A1, B1, C1, D1, right. E1, <laughs> G1, so, and then we stop. <laughs> and then we stop, right. So we work, you've been working on those ideas, man, for like 10 years or so. Oh, it's good. 16. 16 years. 1970, I wrote. I wrote a doctorate for MIT because I used to be an injectionist. Right. 
I uh, I used to work for oil tankers, uh -huh. and I was a glue expert. I knew I know four hundred different types of glue. Yeah, I would inject them into five pound screws, with a big gigantic twenty foot needle. Uh huh. Shit. You know, and I would X ray a screw, to see if there was a fissure inside the screw. Right. I would develop a certain math to fill that fissure. We would freeze a room this size, freeze it two hundred sixty degrees below zero. Uh -huh. right, absolute zero, of course. Yeah. Right? We freeze the room and then we inject this hot glue into it. And you x-ray the screw again to see if it was filled. Right. Then you fry the room at about 115 degrees. Yeah. And you put more glue inside the hole. Uh -huh. And then you x-ray it again to see if it was filled. Yeah. When you screwed it on top of an oil tanker, it prevented static fire. Right, I see. Safety. That's what I used to do. No way. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a place called Marine Moisture Control. Right. And we controlled the moisture in the, yeah. in, the, in the screws for the barnacles not to stick to it and all the other right. wind and the salt and all the iodine in the air and gold and everything eats away everything, right? Yeah. Technological. <laughs> Except technocrat. I'm a technocrat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's jump over a bit, man. Tell us, this is going to sound pretty basic, but tell us, uh, you used to write graffiti. No. You didn't write graffiti? No. No, not on the trains. You've no. been working on it on your own style on canvases and stuff. No, I wrote on the trains, but I didn't write graffiti on the trains. Right. And what did you write on the train? I wrote Gothic Futures. All oh, right, the same thing. Right. Uh -huh. See, uh, the word graffiti was given from society right. to uh -huh. the people who were too young to explain themselves. Right. When we read this word in the dictionary, we understood it meant scribble scrabble. Right. Now, how can you have a military? You see, we were gangsters, right? Yeah. We were gang club. Mm -hmm. How can a, a group of people who are organized have... Written scribble scrabble. I mean, yeah. we weren't taught to write scribble scrabble when we were four yeah. and five years old. Yeah. I mean, that's scribble scrabble to me, the normal written letter. But when you do blockbusters like on that uh, a a a a AKI, AK uh, Aki box, whatever yeah. the hell it's called, yeah. you can read those symbols. Yeah. Now, society called us graffiti when we wrote symbols that had some flamboyancy to it, right. which means. In the dictionary, graffiti means scratching illegible writing, unillegible writing, right? But we had something called the military unreadable, militarily the unreadable, yeah. which were tank styles. Tank style. Now, if you can develop a military to something that can't possibly, how do you say, fit the bill of society, so they title you off. Yeah, graffiti. Right? Yeah. When you look at, now there's this thing in New York called scratchy. Scratchy, yeah where that's even more graffiti than what we did on the trains because now they're doing what they did as hieroglyphics you know about the, in the cro magnon days yeah. they're taking a razor blade or a rock and they're scratching into the window yeah. no style can ever develop from this yeah. so from the uh, i say from 72 to 81 an entire repertoire of styles were developed and i, I named them burners grillers yeah. You know, they all came from Wild Style. Phase Two was the inventor of Wild Style. Yeah. Burners, Grillers, you know, Wizards. Yeah. Then of course the Tank Style. Uh -huh. So you can't actually. It's hard for the government to believe that in the dark you developed something so complete that it, you and then you came up with wind tunnel. You can't possibly do that now. They were taking the trains from the IRTs, from the BMTs, and the INDs, and they were switching them around. Yeah. So if you wrote your name on an IRT train, number two, right? It goes express, wind tunnel, right? Yeah. Going very fast, about 35 miles an hour, your name is riding down those tracks, right? Yeah. Right? And I ride on the double R train on express. It's going about 35 miles an hour, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't like each other. So we don't ever want to ride on the same train line, right? And the transit system takes those two train cars, not knowing what they're doing, and they switch them up and they're both on the same train. Yeah. Now I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> so they plan they didn't plan it, but it was it's an unplanned war. Yeah. That is a war. That is a war. Yeah. That's graffiti. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a better word for it. I call it gothic futurism. Okay. What was the reaction of because uh, you touched onto the fine art world, you know, people like Basquiat and Keith Harry. What was their what was their reaction to your gothic futurism, man? Did you discuss ideas with that? With the no, I was brought in New York City to interrogate John Michel. Yeah, what happened with that, man? 
Um, I had did a painting. I, as a matter of fact, I did three paintings. Uh, John Michel made a bet with me for five thousand dollars that he could do what I could do, and I could do what I couldn't do what he could do. Right. And I say, oh yeah, you got all that stupid fucking money sitting on the table. Here's five grand. I put like, three canvases. It was about four by five per foot canvases. Mm -hmm. So I did an old Italian style, because I'm half Italian. Uh -huh. I did an old Italian style of graffiti. Something you learn in books, because that's what John Michel, he's not a, he's not a dream artist. Yeah. He's a book. Yeah, he read a lot. Yeah, you know, a, a sponge for a brain, he absorbed. Yeah. My, my genius loci is natural. I put out, I don't take in. You see, I, I block it, I'm a militant. I don't take in, I'm a Puritan. I don't take in. Mm -hmm. I put out from what the genetic code speaks for me, right. where he would take in, and they called him the best graffiti writer for the first four years of his art career. And Fat Five Freddy had brought me into New York City to stop this man really? from being known as one of the best graffiti writers. Now, I'm contradicting myself because I hate the word graffiti. Yeah. But if John Michel would have, if I wasn't to attack him, there wouldn't have been a change for him to become a pop artist. He would have still been called a graffiti artist. Really? But representing us, all 10,000 of us, as him being the best, yeah. and no fucking better. So what did you do to stop that, man? I interrogated him. I asked him questions. I said, I found, figured out that he was book smart. Yeah. I found that all he did was write on walls. He never, ever touched a train. Neither did Keith Haring. Never did they ever touch a train. Now, you're not a monk now. You have to be a monk. A monk writes on, the, on a page. doesn't write on a wall. And they didn't understand that. Yeah. And society then switched it up and called him a, a popular artist. Yeah. Simply because the three paintings that I did paint to win this bet, yeah. and I won. You won the bet. Oh, yes, I did. I painted. He paid you. I painted. No, yeah, he paid me and didn't like it neither. Yeah. He threw a punch at me too, and I was, kissed him on it. Yeah. The three paintings were done. I have. I didn't bring any of my magazines neither. My, 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 my theses. I didn't bring anything. Yeah. Uh, his gallery owner, Anina Nose, uh, it's uh, 100 Prince Street in New York City. Sold my three paintings as his work really? and told with collector, two collectors that bought it, told it to me and John in front of both of our faces. John Michel, this is the best work you ever did. Really? He looked at she me, I said, really? Give me my money. <laughs> and she That's said, it, What are you it. talking about? I said, You just sold my three paintings. We made a bet that he couldn't do what I could do and I can do what he does better, and you just proved it. And what was his reaction? He threw a punch at me. I caught it and kissed it. Yeah, and he gave you your money. And he gave you my money. What was what was the uh, what did you do the three paintings off? Man? I took the she she shit, I right? said give me my paintings because she never really shipped them. Yeah. <laughs> she never really shipped them. It was in South Carolina. Yeah. She never really shipped them. Really? So they had to come back. They stole a sculpture of mine. Yeah. You know to replace because she, what happened was she wrecked her reputation. By selling... Yeah, she didn't know what she was on about. Man. No, and she didn't know me and him made a bet. And she didn't know that I could beat the boy at what he was doing. Many people can do that shit. Yeah. So he was beaten, and it just made him look extremely unintellectual. It made him look like a gray matter sponge. Right. You know, And where real genius loci do not sponge up. Yeah. They give off. Give out. They, we do not absorb. <laughs> we squeeze and right. drain. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he didn't like that, and she didn't like it, and she started spreading rumor. I tried to rape a daughter, and they really? stole the sculpture, and shit, man. you know, yeah. I tried to choke her and shit. I said, "Why don't you just tell her, tell the world that you know, basically, I beat him at a bet, and I, my paintings were better than his." Simple as that. Why don't you mm. just say that? And then it was his turn to do what I do. Yeah. What did he do, man? Nothing. He couldn't. No way. Yeah. He did stupid little tags on a wall. You know, Samo, that's not. Yeah, what was we that did. was that his attempt to yeah, get that's what his attempt to be you, really. No, oh no, it was no Ramos E is an equation for aerodynamics. Ram times elevation equals ocean. Right. Okay. It's a Dutch word that I made up in America. That's how come I'm so popular in in Holland. Right. It's double letters, right? Uh -huh. Um no, he, he just he just tried to do a letter, but he did it worse than a little kid. Because that's where his mind was at. How to inflict pain and punishment on the intellectual, or pseudo intellectual society by being a genius kid? You see, and that's how he wrecked them. They, they wanted so badly.
to think that that was the best writing on the walls. Because, like I said, we have militarily the unreadable. So, of course, they can't read it. It's mm. too violent, too many colors, you know, mm. missiles shooting, arrows going this way, you know, they yeah. can't deal with it. But when you write something as a bad signature, yeah. you know, oh, they can get into that. Yeah. That's the best the mind can <laughs> offer from the black culture, yeah. Afrofuturism. Uh -huh. But, see, I'm a threat. <laughs> See, I'm a threat, see, because I show organization. I even show a little bit of tyrancy and terrorism. Yeah. Intellectually, not physically. Uh -huh. Mental violence. When you turn the white Europeans or the Greeks alpha beta, drop the A as alphabet. When you can speak highly the Japanese uh, before the 1600s had, what was the first sound for the first pictogram in the Japanese alphabet, alphabet. It was not A, it was not A, it was not I. When you're sitting there and you're giving lectures and a kid says, oh, I didn't know that. I said, you've been westernized, yeah. you know? Now, you go back to your libraries in Japan, you figure out what was the sound for your first pictogram before World War I. And the dude came back and he said, bye, y'all. <laughs> He said something like that. <laughs> so I said, you've been westernized, you see. So two Greek letters, you drop the A from the beta, alpha, beta, drop the A as alpha, bet. Right. And we, somehow the Romans allow this and the, the, the Europeans uh, spread this two-letter substance as the beginning title for every spoken language, whether it's hieroglyphics, pictograms, or whatever you want to say, mm. all over the world. Yeah. To the Japanese who hates us, that's terrorism. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I hope I'm not too much for you. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. We'll have to like, break it down later on and take it in chunks, man. We got time. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on to a different area, man. Tell us, uh, <sighs> tell us just... some of your early experiences of emceeing, man. How did you get into that? Oh, <laughs> oh, well, all right. How did that all begin, man? 75, I would guess, 74, 75. I started rhyming with a guy named Shockdell, um, S-H-O-C-K-D-L-L, and he used to call himself Grand Sire Shockdell. Uh -huh. A couple of years younger, younger than me. I saw him in a park rhyming, and my brother had just you know, started teaching me break dancing. Uh -huh. My younger brother, as a matter of fact. Let me see if I can remember that shit now. We'd be rhyming to a song called To Be Real, and I would do uh, a thing called Gangsta Duck, which uh, you've already yeah, heard, I think. I heard that. that um, uh, we, we kept on rhyming together, and we'd go to PAL centers, PAL centers, the police athletic leagues, and it would always be under the police station or in the bottom of a project, mm -hmm. and they would let you, you know, sell tickets, you know, and bands would go up against each other. Explosion Disco, and uh, uh, I was from a stimulation assassination. Uh, I had 16 people down with the crew because I was a gang leader at the time. Right. And um, then you'd rhyme and there'd be bullets flying. If you didn't like it, uh, you'd get off the mic. If you did like it, you'd keep rhyming and you'd be a part of your excitement. you get some pussy the next night. Because <laughs> the girls loved it to see that you wouldn't stop when the motherfuckers were shooting. Yeah. They loved it. Made that pussy tight. <laughs> Oh, uh, you don't need to print that. <laughs> um, besides that, uh, somewhere around 76, I went to jail for a couple of years. And uh, when I got out, I was more schooled in this thing called 5% Nation. Uh -huh. I became a divine god in the 5% Nation. Uh, I had known my 1 to 10, my 1 to 40. I came with my own theses of 1 to 720 degrees of a cipher, which is two ciphers. 360 and 360, 720, right? Two more 360s is 1,440 degrees of science. Right. So that made me a divine god uh -huh. uh, in a gang culture. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, written up all my science, and I went to a place called Stank Park in New York, where you had a, a congregation of all of these people, mm -hmm. and uh, they'd surround you in a cipher, You'd have a bishop on the outside of the cipher who was higher than the divine god because he was older. Mm -hmm. He'd stand and he'd stand behind. There'd be 12 people in the cipher and you'd be in the middle, mm -hmm. number 13. The bishop would go to the next person and it'd be like a clock. Uh -huh. And you'd have to answer 
every time you went to the next person, this person had to, you know, hit you with a question, ask you a question, A-X-C, you a question. Because he knew that if he didn't do that, the bishop was going to hit him in his back. Right. So he had to do it to you before he got hit. Right. So now you got, a, you got a, a different type of school. It's not violent, yeah. but I've been cut. Yeah. Because if I didn't answer the question right, the bishop would say, hit him. Right. And I get hit, and I had to defend myself, right? Uh -huh. And then the bishop would move to the next person and just go all the way around. All right. So, yeah. that's my answer for you, boys. All right, cool. Um, talk a bit about, uh, you were saying yesterday, you were saying with Future 2000, you had that thing together about, you know, you're, you're the same as the Gothic Futurism. That touches Future on that. 2000 was explained to somewhere around 1989, or what was, what was I saying? 1987. I told him that your mechanism formation, according to my thesis, is Futurist mechanism, and magnification is 2000. 2000. Right. So you're drawing my tanks, and instead of doing it in the blue shift, you're doing it in the red shift, if you know anything about space calculation. Oh, uh, it's, um, it's quantum physics. Um, there's a blue shift and a red shift of time in space. Right? And when you magnify the blue shift, you get a tank very, very small, it looks like a dot, because you're like God, looking through a microscope. Mm -hmm. I explained this to him. And we see the exhaust that he's painting. Right. So Future is, all paintings, I called him the master mapper. He did maps of mechanisms that were magnified 2,000 times. 2,000 times. He liked it the first couple of years, but then he switched up his style, because I guess maybe made sense right. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who are you still friends with from the, you know the names I have no friends <laughs> I have no friend no. only friend I have is my damn girlfriend really yeah only one left yeah. how long have you been with her how long have you been with damn girl seven years eight years oh yeah I'm married already yeah All right. common law wife <laughs> oh man. it's not a rude question how old are you? Me? Yeah. How old am I, God damn it. Oh, 34. 34. Yeah, I'll be 35 December. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> That's all that goddamn glue in my brain, boss. <laughs> Word. <laughs> all right, man. You know that there's a photograph in Subway Art, man. A photo of you standing with someone, uh, you know, holding a plastic cup, I think, one of you. Oh, yeah, how about this, yeah. yeah. I was wearing a white do-rag, right? And you're standing in front of that piece with that, I think it was as a knock piece on the wall with a red character. It says, out to bomb. You know, it's in, it's in Subway Art, in the book, right? Hold on now, was I standing with uh, Tracy 168? I don't know, who was Was a white guy in the picture? I think it's, no, I think he's black, man. I think he's wearing like Phase a two, and there was another Puerto Rican dude sitting to, oh, oh, was it three people in the picture or two people in the I picture? I think there's two. It's you and someone else, man. All right, if it's two people in this guy, I think I know what you're talking about. It's a red piece that said war, and there's one character yeah. was like, right, that's Tracy 168. That's Tracy. Yeah, it's Tracy oh, 168. Yeah. I remember, remember this very much. Yeah. That was done on, um, that was done on 14th Street and 9th Avenue in the Triangle Bill. That was the first graffiti show where everybody really got together. Uh, that was a show. That photograph is at a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was there. It looks, because it looks like it's in someone's house or something, man. It's, a, it's like a house. All right. It it's like a house. house. Sleazy ass gallery owner. Right. Who <laughs> rented out his house. And <laughs> right. yeah. But it was, uh, it was about 40, 45 works was up on the wall from yeah. 13, 14 different artists. Yeah. Did you have some of your works in there? No, I do believe I just started to come to New York City at the time. I was a modeler. I used to work for Wilhelmina. And I just started coming there, and they kept looking me up and down, you know, and asking me my prices, and I was like, too expensive for my shit like that. So mm. How can I be too expensive when Futura and the rest of these guys' his prices is higher than mine? Mm. But then they looked you up and down again. It, it just, I wasn't culture oriented to what they thought the culture should look like. Right, yeah. Sorry, I have no intention of doing that. Yeah, cool. I don't think you should either. Yeah. For anything, for anybody. Be who you are, wreck them, and then die. Yeah. Um, look, man. So, uh, what happened to all those people that are in the scene? I, I don't want to use the word graffiti anymore, but uh, for example, what happened to the graffiti writer Kid? Did you know Kid? There's four kids, boys. Four kids. 
the yeah. which one you talk. I don't know, just the one who has the fat kid whole carts and Star Wars. It's two so kids like that now. Yeah. Alright, so what am I gonna say? Kid would be hanging the one you talking about must have been hanging out with Duster. Yeah. Alright, um probably up in the Bronx. I think I believe uh, Henry Chalfon's 50th birthday party I met him again. Mm -hmm. He's with Scene. Yeah. Scene. And, uh, seen the tattoo or Scene. Yeah. Scene, Scene's doing tattoos now. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Very good too. Yeah, he's he likes to pinch you hard. He likes to stick to the limb. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about some of the other people around. What happened to, uh, what happened to Cap, man? <laughs> you don't want me to talk about it. <laughs> what happened to Cap? Cap, I believe, is supposed to have went into the army and he came out of the army and uh, he had what he had shot men or some shit like that. Men is in jail now and shit. Delta just saw him in jail, as a matter of fact. Delta was one of the people I used to work with. Yeah, um, yeah he uh, since the style developed to its fullest point, which is called iconoclast panzerism. Mm -hmm. Iconoclast means symbol destroyer. Panzerism means ism is practice and pan. Zir, right, is armored division. You know, uh, Rommel, Rammel, you know, right. Rommel, the Desert Fox, the yeah. tank, the yeah. tank division of uh, for Hitler was commanded by a person, Rommel, right. Rammel, uh -huh. right. See, yeah. so we have something in common there. Uh -huh. We designed the tanks for Hitler's World War, and I designed the tanks for the trains. Yeah. So Rommel, Rammel, right, uh -huh. yeah. and. Um, after everything was developed somewhere around 1979, all this stuff started with cap, and the styles were just simply taken out. The transit system was taken it out, washing off the good stuff first, leaving the what we call the cancer to the blood system. The transit system is a blood system. It's just like the veins in your arm. Mm. Uh, what, what BMTs over here, IMDs over here, IITs over here, and they all flow with human beings we call information. It's like the super highway, but it's under the ground. Mm. You know, yeah. you know, and uh, Cap wiped out most of the big time writers. I was more, more known as an assassin. Uh -huh. I would only hit presidents. Uh -huh. I would not ride on the train as a normal person would ride on the train. Normal person, <laughs> but normal people. <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would be hired to do these hits. Right. You know? yeah. And it could either be spray paint, be money, drugs, whatever, mm -hmm. sex, whatever the fuck it was. Right. And you, you'd hit Cap would cross out the big time stuff like blockbusters, like you know. Doze or Dandy or you know people like that, you know yeah. big time whole cars. Yeah, yeah. He never would cross out Lee though. He wouldn't cross. Yeah, Lee. He wouldn't cross out Lee. So you had this to worry about. Plus you had the transit system crossing out and washing off all of the good stuff and letting the bad stuff become more and more dominant. Right. We called it a cancer. Right. We had assembled, I think it was 1983 with a uh, 83 was it? Yeah, it must have been 83. With a person called Richard Ravage, who was the chairman of the board of the MTA in New York. Yeah, Dick Ravage. Dick, yeah. there you go, right yeah. there. That's his name. Right? Yeah. And me, Ali, Lee wouldn't come, right? But me, Ali, Fat Fat Freddy, Don D, oh, Zephyr, oh, three or four other motherfuckers was there. Uh, and we all read our papers off, yeah. and me and Ali teamed up on, on Ravage and shit because he liked he wanted to play staff sergeant on us because mm. he didn't like the way we were talking. Right. We were talking more for the development of our styles. Yeah. And he's trying to get it to stop. We don't want it to stop. Yeah. We want to develop it more because we had the knowledge of these wind tunnels. We were developing toys, man. You know, in the, in the subways, when you were called a toy, you're supposed to be a bad artist. You're not good at all, right? Mm. But what ended up happening is that I ended up making toys. <laughs> I, I ended up making toys, you see? Mm. You know, with the skateboard wheels and the wings and the missiles on it, right? Look at this D. Yeah. So if, it's again, it's a subliminal. If you're being called a toy, you're a toy. You're no good, you're no good, you're fucked up, you're a toy. Would you ever develop a toy? It's brainwashing. Mm. If you call a graffiti writer, you're a graffiti writer, you're no good, we don't like it. Get, a, get away from this, right? Would you ever develop something sensible? No. Because the two words, the words that we call ourselves, toys, mm. bad word, bad style, and the word that society put on us, graffiti, 
scratching, illegible, bad style. Mm. These two words, one from us to them, one from them to us, destroyed us. Yeah. So somewhere around 85, we were finished. But see, if it wasn't for the, the tank style coming from the equation ram times elevation equals ocean, we would have still been very bad style because there would have been no development. You would have had a lot of arrows, which are direction symbols, and they had no place to go. Yeah. So if you got a lot of arrows locked down, now you, if you remember old Chinese thinking, an arrow was the first missile, you know, the first rocket that used to be when they were doing Chinese fireworks. These are the same arrows we did in Wild Star. It was very much like uh, the arrows you see here. Right. You know? And they were filled with gunpowder. But they looked just like the Wild Star arrows we did on the train. If it had a curve, it was an emotional direction symbol. If it was straight, it was going to turn into a missile because it went down the wind tunnel. Yeah. Architecture, right? Yeah. Simple design. <clears throat> what happened to uh, to Shy? One four seven. Didn't homeboy die? Yeah. How did he die? Oh, I don't know, boss. Didn't know. I don't know that. Yeah. Oh man, man. I